Мама си, мама са, мама куса. Я приветствую тебя словами мира, словами хип-хапа. Если ты слышишь это прямо сейчас, значит добро пожаловать на студию 21. На этих волнах живет хип-хап. Меня зовут Сэм. И сегодня в этой студии особенный гость. Сегодня в эту студию я позвал одного из самых горячих продюсеров сегодня в индустрии, известного под именем Пьер Борн. Йоу. Йоу, Пьер, you wanna come out here? You did it. Он это сделал, он это сделал. Do you, do you know any Russian words? To be honest, no. Mm-hmm. But I can learn. Let me give you, let me, what do you want to know in Russian? Help. Help. Oh, oh that's interesting. Помощь. <laughs> you never know when you're going to need some help, so. Well, how do I say that? Помощь. 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 Или помоги. What? Помоги. Помоги. Yeah, that's like, if you want to ask for help, mm-hmm. you'll be like, помоги. Помоги. Okay, это right. первое. Помоги. What? I need help. Help! What? You what know, if, it might be emergency. What if you, you would <laughs> use that word in one of your tracks, like an ad lib or something? That'd like be that. hard as fuck. Hmm. To be honest, I don't like doing stuff like that. Hmm. Like, lately I've been doing stuff like that. Just saying clever things as my ad lib. Like, being animated, you know. Uh-huh. Having fun. Having fun. That's, that's, that's Gotta the, have fun. That's the key. Я только что предложил Пьеру, что если на одном из своих треков он использует как Эдлип слово «помоги». Что думаете? Hmm. What are the things like the basic general questions? What are the things you've heard about Russia? Okay. What have I heard about Russia? Yeah. I heard that I might get hacked. Oh, hacked? Mm-hmm. I heard there's a lot of hackers out here. Who told you that? People in America. CNN, Fox News. No? Artists. Artists? Producers. Really? They've gotten hacked. In Russia. You mean they plug their computer somewhere? Nah, it's just somebody out here is really, really, really smart. Damn. So I'm not connecting my computer to no <laughs> internet. Just to save my music. I'm serious. Yeah, I thought That's the only thing I was worried about coming out here. Like, please, I just hope I don't get hacked. Because... I've been doing good for about two years, two and a half years. Uh-huh. The first year I got hacked, my Instagram got hacked, my PayPal got hacked, my Snapchat got hacked, my numbers got leaked. I had to change numbers twice in the same year. But well, that was all in the States, not in Russia. Mm-hmm. But uh-huh. they were telling me, like when my Snapchat got hacked, it was somebody out here that had my Snapchat. Come on! Because they weren't American. Like they were posting stuff and talking. In Russian. Yeah, like... They had, they had no ties with the United States, man. Because I was like, who is this guy on my page pretending to be me? Damn. Я только что спросил у Пьера, какие его впечатления или что он знает о России. И он сказал нечто удивительное. Мол, среди артистов в Штатах ходит байка, легенда. Мол, если ты приедешь в Россию, будь осторожен, не подключайся к Wi-Fi, потому что тут тырят твои биты. Man, people usually say about snow, about theater, I don't know, about Red Square. This is the first time I heard of someone. I mean, that was some, like, from my peers in the music world. Uh-huh. But, like, I guess regular people would probably just say it's cold or snow or some uh-huh. shit. Like uh-huh. But uh-huh. people that I work with or, like, my peers, I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm watch my back. <laughs> 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 I think I'm okay, man. Y'all are cool. Yeah, let's take it way, way back okay. to your childhood. Okay. Can you tell me what music did your parents play around home? What music did you oh, grow man. up on and stuff like that? My mom played a lot of Alicia Keys. Whoa. Like, Alicia Keys, Mary J. Blige, all that sad R&B pain music. Like, she would, she would play it whenever she cleans up and stuff, you know. And then my 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 father's side, they listen to like southern music, more so like, what is it? What I don't even know the name. Southern of the song. rap or like it's not. It was like jazz. it was before, it was before. Um, I really was like maybe a teenager. I was still like a little little kid. It was I guess it's called rhythm and bass music. Rhythm and bass. Yeah, it's like oh. it's not really hip hop. But it was similar to like uh, the Florida sound mm-hmm. when they were doing like the the bass, like Luke, mm-hmm. Uncle Luke. Yeah. 
my uncle, I mean, my, my father, he listened to, when they would be out in functions and, like, little parties and stuff, they would play, like, music I thought was similar to that stuff. Mm-hmm. So it was, like, heavy bass, a lot of 808s, a lot of just, I don't know. Groovy music, I yeah. guess. And then my uncle, he put me on the dip set and Kanye West and G-Unit. G-Unit's from, like, the same neighborhood as me. Wow. So that's why I kind of, like, always knew I could do this. Я спросил у Пьера, на какой музыке он вырос или какую музыку крутили дома родители. Он сказал, что мама крутила, по его словам, грустный R&B или R&B боли по типу Алиши Кейз, Мэри Джей Блайдж. Отец Пьера крутил ритм and bass, yeah? mm-hmm. Музыку или жанр из uh, южных штатов США под названием ритм and bass. А дядя Пьера подкинул ему Kanye West, Deep Set и G-Unit. И сам Пьер, он из того же района, что и G-Unit. Do you remember what was the what was the moment in your life where you like begin to take music serious as something you would love to do for life? Um what was that point? When I was in elementary school, I got to rap in my in front of my class in fifth grade. Wow. Um but before then I was just that's just what I wanted to do. Like they would ask us to draw what we wanted to be when we grow up. Yeah. Drew a microphone. Wow. So I've always been into it, but my mom would just be like You better stay in school. Like you better do your schoolwork. You better like it was just school, school, school. So I just made sure I did that on top of the music. So she could never be like put the music up. Because uh-huh. as long as my schoolwork is getting taken care of, she can't. You could rap. Yeah. Я спросил у Пьера, помнит ли он момент своей жизни, когда он начал воспринимать музыку серьезно, как нечто, чем бы он хотел заниматься в течение всей своей жизни. Он сказал, что однажды в пятом классе он зачитал рэп перед классом, и вообще в детстве, в школе, когда их просили нарисуйте, кем вы хотите быть, он рисовал постоянно микрофон. Кроме того, мама Пьера всегда ему говорила, занимайся, учись, и только так он мог заниматься или читать свой рэп. Could you point out, uh, let's say, three main influences i mean in rapping in your life what the top three mcs for pure born of all time oh man those are really big l rest in peace big l rest in peace big l if nobody amen. knows who big l is look him up man he's a legend in new amen. york amen man big l um i want to say three six mafia uh-huh. a lot of the juicy j project pat Really Project Pat, not even 3-6. Really Project Pat was a huge influence on me because he had so much character in his songs early on before anyone was trying to do like weird ad-libs or like, ooh, like he was doing stuff like that. Now, that's like the normal thing. Yeah, everyone so does. He was a know. way, he was, he was two decades ahead of his time, like maybe even three. I don't know how old the music is, but yeah, they definitely influenced me a lot. Uh-huh. Я спросил у Пьера, мог бы он назвать топ-3 самых главных инфлюенсеров, повлиявших на его стиль, и он назвал Big L. Все мы знаем, конечно же, кто такой Big L. Он назвал 36 Mafia и особенно отметил Project Pat. Okay, the last question in this part. Mm-hmm. Jay Dilla versus Kanye West. Damn, Jay Dilla. Uh, for sure. Jay why, Dilla. why so? Have you heard his beats? Of course I have, yeah. Okay, then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Kanye my big bro, but everybody knows it's Jay Dilla. Like, what? What? If I could have got a Jay Dilla beat, man, rest in peace, man. Rest like, that's peace. somebody I really, really wish I could have worked with. Uh-huh. Like, out of anybody. Man, Jay Dilla was one cold brother, man. He was dope. Really dope. Я спросил у Пьера, кого он выбирает, Джей Дилу или Канни Уэст, и он сказал, конечно же, Джей Дилу. Я попросил его объяснить, почему, и он спросил, разве ты не слышал музыку Джей Дилу? Haven't you heard Джей Дилу? А? Я вот и Пьер Борн на Studio 21, сделаем небольшую паузу и вернемся, а пока что пуф. Доброго времени суток, дорогие радиослушатели, слушатели дорогого радио, это Studio 21. Меня вроде бы зовут Сэм, и справа от меня... Do you remember the word? No. I gave you a Russian I, word. I, I, I know it, but I don't want to say it wrong, so I'm not going to say it. Uh-huh. Because then people are going to, like, really be upset with me. Yeah. So let's not do that. You want but to... I, I, I kind of kind of remember it. You want to you want one more? Yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. What do you want to know besides help? Okay. Sauce. What does sauce mean? Like, how do you say sauce? You mean, like, sauce as literally sauce? Yeah, sauce. 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 Uh-huh. 
sauce. That's easy, sauce. Is the same thing? Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just what we do in Russia. Like we, we like a word in a different language, and we just like maybe twist one or two sounds. <laughs> That's basically the same thing. So, so that's so. easy for me then. That's cool. With me. You say so. rap, we say rap. <laughs> I don't know. You say uh, whatever, whatever. Back home they say stuff like that. Tomato, tomato. Yeah, Ella Fitzgerald has a song about that. For real? Yeah, Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong. You say tomato, I say tomato. That's a classic. That's a classic. Let's, let's get back to you. Okay. You say that you the first time like. You began to take rap serious was in fifth grade. That's when I, um, when when everyone, when I rapped in front of the class and everyone like clapped. That's when I was like, oh, before I wanted to rap, mm -hmm. but when everyone clapped and like received it well and was like, it was dope. That's mm -hmm. when I was like, yeah, I want this every time, like every day. But how come you began as a producer? That's not my fault. What happened? What's the story? People wanted to get on my beats. That's the story. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't a producer. I was a producer for myself. And but I met Nudie, I met Cardi, I met a lot of people. But all those beats were for me first. Like, people wanted to get on my beats. You not like, a lot of people think that I was making beats first and then I got bored with the artists I was working with and wanted to rap. That is not the case at all. I wanted to rap first. And then I just blew up as a producer. Uh -huh. I was cool with that though. Like, if I'm gonna blow up, let's just blow up. I'm not gonna. I can't get mad at how God blesses me. Amen. So Amen. I yep. just have to adapt and figure out a way to still get what I want out of my life and not uh, be put in a box. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's why I was saying, like, with this tour, uh, it took a little while to finally get it started. But now that it's rolling, it's it's real. Like. No, no letting up now. We're not going back ever. Я спросил у Пьера, если он говорит о том, что в пятом классе был первый раз, когда он действительно стал воспринимать рэп серьезно, решил заниматься рэпом, то как так получилось, что мы узнали о Пьере в первую очередь как о продюсере? Он рассказал историю о том, что он делал биты, делал их для себя, но так или иначе рэперы по типу Young Nudy, по типу Playboy Cartier слышали его биты, хотели залететь на его бит, и так случилось, что он сначала прорвался к нам в мейнстрим как продюсер, хотя с самого начала он видел себя как MC, как рэпер. If you were to describe your style in producing your beats, how would you describe it? Having fun. Just having fun. To be honest. Just mm -hmm. capture however I feel. Mm -hmm. And put in the beat. I don't really overthink or like I need to add this sound or I need to make this type of beat. I literally just put my emotions into it and go from there. Now let me make it more specific. How do you make a Pierre Bourne type beat? What do you need to have in there? Um, I don't really know how to answer this question. To be honest, uh, I feel like the world already knows this answer because it's a lot of songs that you probably played today or yesterday that sound like my beat that I had no, no part in. And it sounds just like something I would do. So I really don't know what people do to sound like me. I, like I said, I just be having fun, man. And then mm -hmm. people gravitate towards it. That's on them. Mm -hmm. so I'm I'm happy how things have have went, and I'm trying to further that and keep going. But yeah, I just try to have fun. I don't really overthink like that, man. It's a lot of people might think it's that deep. Like you might be having like a whole strategy, a whole formula. <laughs> nah, no formula over here, man. I'm just making cool vibes, and hopefully somebody like it. <laughs> Я спросил у Пьера, как он может описать стиль его музыки, стиль его битов. И он сказал, что он не вкладывает настолько больших мыслей или стратегий или планов, когда он делает бит. Самое главное для него — это выразить свои эмоции и have fun. Затем я спросил у него, как сделать Пьер Борн Тай бит, потому что ты слушаешь и наверняка хочешь знать. И он сказал, что не могу на это ответить. Ты и сам слышишь, когда люди стараются подражать моему стилю. Let's take it to 2017, mm -hmm. to Playboy Cards' debut album. My question is, uh, how do you think personally, what did Playboy Cards' needed from Pierre Bourne on that project? Why did he approach you? Why did he want to work with you? Because a lot of people say that you were the one who engineered his sound, engineered his style. What um, was he looking for? I guess he was really, he was really looking for a new sound. Um, 
literally just a new sound, something different from what he was already doing. And uh, he was a fan of Young Nudie. Um, I had did a lot of production for him before mm-hmm. I met Cardi, mm-hmm. and we were kind of like big in Atlanta, so we were we were popular out there. And Cardi came across it and then reached out to me. And then when we got to the studio, he basically just explained like, "Man, I'm just trying to make you my producer." And mm-hmm. I was just like, "Okay." Mm-hmm. And then that's how I went, <laughs> like literally. What can you say about the working process? How was it? Um. Is were you the one who uh, set up the mood, or was he like, okay, Pierre, I want something that sounds like this? Can you? Nah, it, that's what I'm saying. Like, it don't be that deep. Like, we just play. I just play some beats, man. And whichever one he like, we pull up and he start rapping. Mm-hmm. It's not like I need this vibe. I'm, I'm looking for this dark sound. <laughs> like, it's none of that. Like some artists though, like bigger art. Not no offense to Cardi, but like people who were, who were out before me and him even started. Yeah. Like now they might be like, I need some this kind of vibe. Or, this Turn all the lights off. I need <laughs> candles lit. Like or props in the studio. Like some people now, some artists are crazy. They might request those things. But Cardi, he's not like that, man. He's like me, man. We're the same. We just we just want to work, man. We don't really care for all the extra stuff. We don't even really like a lot of people in the studio. Like uh huh, uh huh. We just try to keep it private and just just go crazy, and make some dope stuff that the world will love. И это работало. Я спросил у Пьера, давай вернемся в 2017 год, дебютный альбом Playboy Carti. Как он думает, зачем к нему пришел Playboy Carti, что было у Пьера, что он искал? И он сказал, что, скорее всего, в то время Playboy искал музыку или саунд, который отличался от всего, что было на рынке. На тот момент Пьер уже был большим в Атланте вместе с Young Newry. Они познакомились, пришли на студию, и Playboy с самого начала сказал о том, что я хочу сделать тебя своим продюсером. Затем я спросил у Пьера... Каков рабочий процесс с плейбоем? Я сказал, ничего сложного, никто не говорит, что «О, я хочу эту энергию» или этот вайб. Они просто слушают биты и просто начинают работать. My last question mm-hmm. in this collaboration sphere. How is it to work with Kanye West? What can you say about that working process? Um, well, I don't think I'm done yet, to be honest. I talk yeah. to him a lot, so that's like my big bro now. I usually just talk to him about advice just try to ask him hella questions and um working with him i guess you would say a dream come true because that's something that i wanted to do when i was younger and i studied his music i studied everything like mike dean did like the whole production team like i would look up all the credits and really try to study like who's doing this who's doing that so when i finally met them and they just brought me in and loved the stuff I was doing it was just like wow like y'all have no idea but I've studied you guys and you guys love me like what mm-hmm. that means I did a great job studying y'all because they wanted something from me now so it was it, that was dope man it was a dream come true man for real did and you have the moments where you wanted to rap for him uh to be honest I didn't play him my rap music until this till two out four came out Mm-hmm. Like literally, I never played him any rap music until my album was done. I don't like to like do stuff if it's not official, or like show stuff if it's not the final work because this is my first impression. I don't want to ruin it. So yeah. and it's Kanye. So when I played him my album, he loved it. Like he loved it. He listened to the entire album all the way through, no skips. He wasn't on his phone or anything. Like he really, mm-hmm. he really listened to it and told me what he liked, just everything. So that was like, yeah, a dream come true. Я спросил у Пьера, каково это работать с Кенни Уэстом, и он сказал о том, что это самое главное впечатление, это его мечты сбылись, потому что он тот человек, который, как только Кенни выпускал музыку, он заходил в кредит, он смотрел, кто за что отвечает, кто за сведения, кто за мастеринг, он изучал полностью Кенни Уэста, и когда стало известно, что Кенни хочет с ним поработать, это оказалось для него как свершением его мечты. Затем я спросил у Пьера, был ли момент, когда он захотел зачитать перед Кенни, как Кенни сделал однажды перед Джей Зи, он сказал, что нет. Он показал ему только, когда был готов The Life of Pierre number four. My last question here. Gucci Mane vs. Playboy Carty. Who do you pick? Are you serious? Yep. I'm sorry. Cardi. Playboy Cardi. Because you know him? No. <laughs> Are you being objective right now? No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Being honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who going harder right now? 
Cardi. We talking about two totally different people, two age, like the the age difference is two generations apart. Like, nah, Wait, I'm going with Cardi. Cardi. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. I mean, some people might be mad at me, but I don't care. Like, hey man, at least you're hey, being honest. Man. Playboy Cardi, Young Nudie, Slaughter Gang, like that's, hey, that's it. <laughs> ASAP Mob, shout out to Rocky. <laughs> Я спросил у Пьера, кого он выбирает, Playboy Cardi или uh, Gucci Mane. Он сказал, конечно же, Playboy Cardi, потому что это новое поколение, и он выбирает ASAP Mob. Короче, это Studio 21. Сделаем небольшую паузу и вернемся. Yo, Pierre. Yo. Have you heard of Russian rap? Uh, not really. I have a friend that was from France in college, and he put me on like French rap, mm. like trap. He showed me like some real hardcore videos. So I know like Europe in general, they're 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 hip to what's going on. Cause I I was kind of shocked. I was like, <laughs> Why, where did they get all these guns? Like. <laughs> Like what? Like what? What's going on? Yeah, I was like, I was like, we're influencing the wrong thing. <laughs> I don't have no guns in my videos. I'm not doing that. But yeah, the new generation. Yeah, the man, it, it's crazy. It's like that's the only way to go viral. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's sad. And a lot of people are incriminating themselves doing that. They don't realize like the police and people are watching and paying attention more than uh, your fans. Damn. Yo, Pierre, can I show you a Russian rap song? Go ahead. You ready? Yeah. Окей, okay, прямо сейчас я покажу Пьеру Борн композицию местного MC. Вы готовы? Насчет раз, два, <laughs> реакция на Studio 21. Это вампир здесь. Может, сильно отупел Я искал себя так долго Был на трапе каждый день Каждый день Они хотят меня От меня детей Я могу ей дать Всего пару дней Снова сел на зам Потерялась тень Эй, я Я нашел себя Не понимал Ты по один Звезда одна Звезда Я не вернусь сюда назад Ты Группи со мной Одиноко все равно, да и все равно Я ночь поменял на этот чек yeah. Сделал кэш, лечу только наверх Питер Пойнхо А, я как посмотри, я был таким тяжелым Заберу тебя за бой в ночи Ты со мной ненадолго Питер Пойнхо упал в пропасть Я уже в пути Свободный ветер, ты не знаешь, где я был и впереди Отключайся свои мысли, мы летим Солнце мьюзи, бэйби, это кэш 20 к на блэк, всё на дым 20 к фунты, не рублей Пошли, я не верю тебе, дека, эту жизнь Она откроет рот, но не заговорит Когда с ней топ, она экологист Ей не нужен кислород, ты посмотри Yo, Pierre. Yo. Your reaction. It sounds all right. It reminds me of like some Uzi. Some, it sounds like something Uzi if he was like from Russia. It probably sound like that. What do you think about the beat? It sounds like a Pierre type beat. Oh, really? For sure. I was asking you what makes a Pierre type beat, and you couldn't. I mean, if it sounds like something me and Cardi did, it's a Pierre type beat. Mm-hmm. If, it sound, if it still sounds like 2017 self-titled, it's definitely a Pierre type beat. It's 2020. Mm-hmm. What about the language? Like, I don't. I didn't know what he was saying, but the melodies were really dope. So. I mean, like, how did the language, in your perspective, fit into this like trap aesthetics or something like that? Like. When you listen to American trap, mm-hmm. I don't know, you have this, you know, the background, you have the cultural feeling. How does the Russian language? I like, fits? I like good music. That's what I was saying. I don't know what he's saying. It just sounded good. Mm-hmm. So I don't really, like, even when it comes to music in this, in America, it's 
sometimes I'm not listening to the words. I just want to hear some good music. So if it sounds good, hey, I'm not complaining at all. <laughs> like it's not about a lot of people might be like, hey, you got to say this. You got to you got to you got to reach this audience. But man, I just like good music. So if it makes me feel good, it's good in my book. Только что я показал Пьеру Боро композицию Платина под названием Питер Пэн, и я спросил его реакцию. Во-первых, он сказал, что песня классная, песня хорошая, песня ему понравилась. Затем он сказал, что он не понимает, о чем было сказано в этой песне, но тем не менее она ему понравилась. Спросил его насчет бита, и он сказал, что этот бит, конечно же, звучит как Пьер Борн Тайп бит. Еще он сказал такую вещь, что лично он такой эмси, который не особо обращает внимание на то, что было сказано в треке. Самое главное это мелодия, самое главное это вайб, самое главное это атмосфера. Ну что, Платина, ты прошел, ты сдал экзамен. Let's talk about your music. Mm-hmm. To love for. Was there a moment where you took a break from producing, making beats, making music for other artists and you concentrated on making this album? Was there a moment? Uh, sort of. I tried to do that, but the album took two years. So Whoa, it was, it two was, years! It took two years to actually complete it. So I couldn't have uh, like stopped producing because, I mean, I wouldn't have had gotten any placements. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I can't like put it off. But sometimes I did like, hey, you know, I'm working on my album. I'll send y'all some stuff, but I can't physically be there. Я спросил у Пьера был ли момент за последний год в котором он остановился работать с другими артистами и сконцентрировался на его альбоме The Live of Pure 4, который вышел в прошлом году. И он открыл мне, что на самом деле он работает над этим го- альбомом 4. Два года, извиняюсь. И были небольшие моменты, когда он брал паузу, но в целом он продолжал работать с ребятами, потому что иначе бы он не попал бы в мейнстрим, о нем бы мало кто узнал. Comparing, let's compare Pierre Born walking for... Whoever's project and Pierre Bourne working on his project. Is there a difference in the way you approach? Um, one, well, I try to make, I try to make sure there is no difference. But usually, there is because the artists they have like several people involved working on their mm-hmm. stuff. So I usually just contribute with the beat. Um, I try to like be more hands on and possibly engineer a little bit or add more to the beat when they're done recording. But The industry, like nowadays, they move so fast. People don't do that anymore. Like growing up, I used to see like interviews and documentaries and stuff. People would tell me like, "We worked on this album for months. We kept changing the beat. Like, mm-hmm. I can't even change the beat if I wanted to." A lot of the artists, they're just happy with what they have. They're satisfied. Like, and you gotta respect the artist's vision. You mean like when you send over a beat or? The artist takes it and he doesn't make changes. He just keeps on working on that. Yeah, most mm. of the time, that's that's the industry nowadays. Mm. Back in the day, it would be like, all right, here's the, here's my beat. You go do your idea. Let me hear your idea. Uh, Give it back to me, and I'll make this sound amazing. Uh-huh. But they don't, let, they don't they get. don't they don't give me the files. They don't do that nowadays. If I could if I could actually get everyone's song that has come out and like just. Just give me a little bit more time with it. Besides, like once they're done, once they're complete, I yeah. promise you it'll be even a bigger song. The only song I was able to do that was Magnolia. Like mm-hmm. I recorded that song. Like Cardi, his engineer, was fixing the rest of the album because the album was supposed to be done. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking this was gonna be the new project that we were working on when I played the Magnolia beat. When I played it, he was like, "I'm gonna rap on this now," mm-hmm. and I was like. I mean, I'll record you, but, you know, I don't really feel like recording you. <laughs> I was honest. I mean, because I had a job engineering before I met Cardi, and I literally just quit. So I didn't want to do that anymore. But I seen that he didn't have an engineer that day, and I do know how to do it. So I did it. Yes, That's why the tag is in there, th- like, three times. Like, in the beginning, the middle, and the end. And the end. Yeah. Я спросил у Пьера, есть ли разница между тем, когда он работает над своей музыкой или над проектом кого-либо другого. Он сказал, что да, сегодня индустрия другая, сегодня индустрия такова, что тебя отправляют задачу, ты делаешь на эту задачу бит, 
и все. И больше ты не трогаешь эту песню, больше ты не видишь этого бита. Он говорит, что раньше было время, когда артист говорил, о, йоу, Пьер, мне нравится твое звучание, вот тебе накидочка, поработай, потом обратно и туда-сюда, они вместе дорабатывали, а сейчас уже в индустрии такое не происходит. И единственная песня, над которой, по его словам, он максимально плотно и сильно поработал, это была «Магнолия» от Playboy Carty. If you were to summarize the life of Pablo for the life of Pierre, man. It's all good. That's where I got the idea from. If you were all good. <laughs> That's why I like it's cool that I got to work with Kanye because I started T Lop to get his attention. Oh, wow. So I got his attention before T Lop five and that's the final one. So Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was an accident. That was an accident. Yeah, it's all good. I ain't mad. If you were to summarize that album, the four parts. How would you summarize? What, what what was the story about from your perspective? Um, the first one, I mean, I put the first one out when I was in a, another situation, I guess, and then the second one I put out when I left that situation. Mm-hmm. And You're the, talking about like personal life. Yeah, personal life. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. just it was a a change in my life. So I usually just put I, well, not usually, but I put those things out when I was really going through stuff, and mm-hmm. then. No one really heard it, per se, I guess, like, as far as the world. But then when I met Cardi, he heard it. And then he was like, why you ain't tell me you rap? Mm. And I was like, because you, you asked me to come and produce for you. And that's so what you're I'm the do. type of person that does. I don't what overstep my boundaries. Mm-hmm. No, no, mm-hmm. no, no, mm-hmm. never, never, never. Mm-hmm. How would they call you back? Mm-hmm. I will never be that guy that's doing too much in any situation because. I just like to chill, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know? But yeah, 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 yeah. Я попросил у Пьера немного... У него есть серия альбомов The Live of Pierre, четыре штуки. Я попросил его сделать небольшую выжимку. Он сказал, что первый The Live of Pierre он написал, находясь в личной ситуации, личная история, которая на него сильно повлияла. Второй The Live of Pierre он написал после того, как эта история закончилась. И затем, как он сказал, Playboy Carty узнал о втором альбоме и сказал, йоу, чувак, а почему ты его до сих пор не выпускаешь? Почему ты его до сих пор не выпускаешь? И я спросил его, йоу, разве ты никогда не показывал Playboy карте, что ты умеешь читать рэп, хотя вы работали над его альбомами? И он сказал, что нет, я такой человек, который делает только то, что меня попросили, и если я здесь для того, чтобы сделать музыку, я делаю музыку и не показываю свой рэп. Пам-пам, парам-пам-пам, это Studio 21, меня зовут Сэм, и сегодня в гости я пригласил Пьера Борн. И? Воу, это был адлип. Да. Это был открытый дверь, да? Да, да, да. Хорошо. Пьер Борн, инженеринг, продюсинг новых адлипс на Studio 21. Expect that Let's ad-lib get it. on his next album. Let's get it. Expect that, al- that ad-lib on his next album. Pierre Bourne это человек, который успел поработать. Во-первых, он практически сам создал дебютный альбом Playboy Carty под названием Playboy Carty в 17 году. Затем он поработал с Kanye West на The Live of Pablo. И он поработал с Kanye West на... What was Kanye's last album? Jesus is King. Yeah, Jesus is King. Поработал на Jesus is King. И последний сольный проект Pierre Bourne называется The Live of Pierre, который вышел в прошлом году четвертая часть. Okay, this is the last one. I want to ask you some silly questions. Okay. All right, Pierre Bourne. Uh, what's your favorite TV show? Oh man, I watch too much TV. Uh, what can I put on right now? Share, share. I gotta pick one. We wanna know. We wanna know what. Uh, what will I watch right now? I will probably watch some Jimmy Neutron. Really? Yeah. Throwback. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have Apple TV, so I have like all the episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Я спросил у Пьера, какой его самый любимый ТВ шоу Jimmy. или сериал, и он сказал Jimmy Neutron. What would you pick? Uh, the Boondocks or Rick and Morty? The Boondocks. Classics. Classics. Я попросил Пьера выбрать между Гетто и Риком и Морти. Он выбрал, конечно же, Гетто. What is your favorite French word? <laughs> oh, man. Pierre well, Bourne. It was, it was, we used to laugh in French class at like, um, I guess, escargots. Escargots? Mm-hmm. Why? Because it's snails. Okay, that's like... Like back home is like, they eat snails like 
when we were when I was in French class and we learned like French people eat snails. Like what? <laughs> and then they go like, you gotta say it. Like you can't call them snails. You gotta say let 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 car go. Uh huh. And it's like you're getting fancy with snails. <laughs> like so yeah. Have you ever tried a snail? No. <laughs> you went to friends on this tour. Yeah, but I, so you know, might, you know, you know, you know I actually know where there's some good, good soul food in Paris. Of course. So that's where I'm going. Я спросил Пьера его любимое французское слово, и он сказал экскарго, потому что в школе они смеялись над тем, что французы едят snail. What snail in Russian? You tell me. Snail in Russian улитки. What? Улитки? Ага, я улитка. Улитка. Улитка, yeah. Улитка. Это Пьер Борн, и он говорит по-русски на Studio 21. Okay, my next silly question. Mm, it's not really silly, it's, it's, it's quite not silly. If you were to pick three biggest songs that you've worked on, mm? would you name three songs? Three big Pierre songs. Pierre Bourne's top three from 20, let's say 16, up till now. Um, Young Nudie, EA... Future 21 Savage, uh, of course Magnolia, and I guess On God, Kanye West. That song is fire. Yeah. How did he? How did he let you leave your tag on that song? He didn't. He put it on there. After. Wait. Yeah, you like when I when I was around him, he was like, "You got the tag, right?" Look back, I was like, yeah. And his engineer was like, put it on the blast drive and I'll put it on there. Yeah, man. He a real one. Everybody be saying crazy stuff about Kanye, man. I love Kanye, man. That's my big bro, man. He put the tag on there, not me. Because I did other beats on the album, but that one, the tags on there, both tags, the, the new one and the, uh, the, the old one. So it's, it's dope, man. I did not know he was going to do that. Because I produced for him before, you know, I like I said, I try to just do my job. I don't yeah. try to overstep my boundaries. I just do what I'm supposed to do and go home. And hopefully they call me back. Hmm. And that's what happened. They called me back. We put the tag on there. And there we go. Во-первых, я спросил у Пьера топ-3 композиции, над которыми он работал. Он назвал совместную композицию Young Nudie 21 Savage. Он назвал, конечно же, Magnolia от Playboy Carty. И затем он назвал последнюю композицию с Kanye West. И он рассказал о том, что... Есть большая история о том, что Kanye не позволяет продюсерам оставлять свои теги на его музыке. Но на этой композиции мы слышим тег Пьера Борна. И оказалось, что сам Kanye попросил вставить этот тег. Man, what's your favorite color? Do you have a favorite color? Purple. Why purple? Um, I don't know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, then my last silly question. What's your 2019 highlight? Um, releasing my album Friday, playing it for Kanye the Sunday, and then we went to Japan Monday. Whoa. That was my highlight. Whoa, all in four days. Craziest four days of my life. How do you feel? Because your success it basically happened, let's say, the end or the beginning of 2018 up till now. Just like one and a half, two years. How Have you adapted? Um, To be honest, no. Mm -hmm. I've, mm -hmm. I've, I think now I need to embrace it more. Mm -hmm. But I think that's the only thing I need to do is just own it. Because a lot of people copy me and do things like me or inspired by me. Now it's time to embrace it, like, instead of getting upset at it. Because it's like, I got, I realized my position in this. So now it's time to embrace it. Я спросил у Пьера его главный хайлайт прошлого года, и он сказал, хайлайт такой. В пятницу он выпустил The Life of Pierre, затем на следующий день он показал его Канни Уэсту, точнее вечер пятницы он показал его Канни Уэсту, затем в понедельник они уже уехали в Японию. Затем я спросил у Пьера, насколько он адаптировался и привык к этому новому уровню славы, который он набрел за последние полтора-два года. Он сказал, что пока что к этому не привык, и сейчас он просто наслаждается. Это был Пьер Борн на Studio 21, который сегодня, между прочим, будет будет выступать на ивенте Клуб Джипси. Начало в 22.00. У тебя еще есть 666 часов. Кроме него, Ромста Чейз Миронов обладает на одной сцене. И кроме того, как мне сообщили, 
два человека выиграли билеты на этот ивент Орехов Максим и Крупенин Сергей. Я yeah, Пьер. Is there anything you want to say before we um, end this? Shout out to Russia, man. We about to go crazy tonight. That's about it. <laughs> Do you have a goal for the 2020s, for the new decade? Uh, 2020, I just want to be bigger and better and smarter and wiser. Just grow. Amen. Amen. Let me give you one more Russian word. Okay. До свидания. What? До свидания. What? До свидания. Does, dos, 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 dos. Vidania. Vidania. That means so, we're finished. Yeah, that's like goodbye. Oh, I, I kind of can hear that in it. Ah, uh, you could. Come on. No, I swear. Really? By how how you were saying it. Uh huh. It sounded like you were saying farewell to me. Uh, no, not to you, to them. Oh, well, goodbye, guys. Goodbye at Bob Pierre <laughs> Bordner Studio 21. <laughs> Studio 21. Studio 21. Base hip hop is dead.